Hey everyone, this is just a little bit of a how-to video to tell you a little bit more about um, pyrography and what I'm doing on this particular project. A lot of people ask me for close-ups after having seen the last video because it looked a little ambiguous. I had the I had the camera too far back. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer and show you some of the different things that I'm doing as I work on this lion. So there'll be uh, uh, different techniques shown just to kind of give you a, a better idea of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. All right, without any further ado, we'll get on to the video. Hope you like watching this and uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Okay guys, uh, a lot of people had asked me about what I was doing with the, uh, or how I was doing some of the different techniques to get the effects I'm getting. Uh, one thing, if you look here at the burner, you can see that the rheostat is turned down to around 550 degrees or so, a little bit less. It's in the tan. And so I've got it low. And the reason I've got it low is because I don't want to overburn the area that I'm getting ready to work on, um, which is going to be up into the shoulder and the sides of the cat. And what I have done is I have the universal point here. And let me, let me show you that universal tip. Hopefully that's... Hopefully that's coming into focus. Anyway, the universal tip, uh, the way that it's been modified had, well, even without the way that it's been modified, all universal tips have a point, a heel, a knife edge, and then two flats, one on either side. And it's using these flats that you can get all kinds of shading and uh, tonal work in. And that's what I'm going to do here. So what I'm doing is I've got the temperature down, I've got the flats ready, they're clean, and what I can basically do is I'm going to come in to this area and using just a very small uh, motion to go with the grain of the, of the fur. Now I don't have to do this necessarily, I can do a small circular motion, but bearing in mind that as I do this it compresses the hairs and then I have to kind of come back in on a few of these hairs and, and uh, retouch those surfaces but I can come in and basically by just doing like this it allows me to create a darker area where there was a lighter area you know and this will actually darken up or intensify the fur tone I've already done that in the upper leg portion so a little bit more is needed over here and there's actually in the photo that I'm working from there's a there's a distinct fur shadow demarcation basically and uh, that's a that's a uh, really critical aspect of what I'm doing too you know you wanna you wanna try as much as possible if you have a photo that you're working from as I am here you have uh, a sort of guideline and you wanna keep within that guideline you don't wanna go too crazy on it you don't want to have um, anything that's gonna be too um, too out of the way. I mean, if, if nature is giving you a clue, uh, you have a guideline, follow it. You know, I mean, don't go exact. We already covered in the last video that you don't want to go precisely the same as the photo for obvious reasons, but you do want to uh, use that as your guideline. If you don't have a photo that you're working from, um, you're going to be a little bit more taxed because you're going to have to understand light and shadow a little bit more and how these things fall across the muscle tone of the animal. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it behooves you, uh, whenever you can, to take your, cue, take your clues from nature. Um, but if you're, if you're doing something out of your mind, if you're doing fantasy art or you're doing, or you're doing something else that you've basically, you've got an idea of what you're doing and you know how you want it to look, then just go ahead and follow that. But always bear in mind that light and shadow law, you know, you can't really get past it. It's interesting because we talked before about the light source coming from this direction. But the light source coming from this direction, you have to think about it in a three-dimensional aspect, not in a two-dimensional aspect. So when I talk about the light source coming from this direction, I don't just mean that there's light that's in front of the cat coming this way. I actually mean that the light is slightly back and it's coming this way over the cat. You can tell that just looking at the cat. Um, that's why you've got a darker shadow line right here along the back where you would think that with that light source coming down it's actually going to uh, that it's actually going to soften that out. 
it does not. It softens right along the edge and that's it. There actually is a little bit of a darker delineation along the back here where the torso starts to round up and that's natural for anything that has a cylindrical shape or has, you know, a rounded shape. Obviously, as you get towards the top, you know, uh, you're going to start to, as you're moving away from the, the surfaces that are best highlighted, you're going to wind up with a little bit darker and the same thing down here. It's going to be a little bit darker than the other surface. Now, I've already gone through and been adding shadow to this, but I'm actually going to add a little bit more. This is actually a very heavily shadowed area in the photograph that I'm using as a, as a reference point. Although it may not be obvious right now, it might look fine. You know, the one thing is that's funny is I um, I used to watch uh, some of these different programs with oil painters. Uh, I can't remember the names. Al Alexander, um, I can't remember the guy's last name. Anyway, Painting with Alexander, I think, was the name of the title. Uh, and I remember watching him do certain oil paintings, and he was phenomenal. He was a very fast painter. He could do a lot of them. He'd done paintings live in a mall for years, and uh, this is a guy who could whip out an oil painting, a very, very nice-looking oil painting, actually, in a matter of a half an hour, 45 minutes at the most. And, of course, for the program, they would time-lapse a few things, but not much. This guy was very fast. And I remember he would do these paintings, and as an artist, you know, you would look at the painting and you would think to yourself, uh, God, you know, it looks perfect right now. Don't do any more. Stop. And, uh, you know, because not understanding where he was going with the painting or what his final vision was, you know, uh, there were plenty of points where we, I, well, I would look at it anyway, and I would think, man, this is perfect as it is. Why is he... Why is he continuing? Why does he press on? Because this thing looks really good. And then he would go through and he would do a few more techniques and I'd suddenly realize that, you know, I really needed to learn a lot more about oil painting because this guy obviously knew his stuff. What he would do then, his, his secondary alterations, if you will, looked even better. And there were just minor things that he would add in, but, it, you know, you would often see it and you'd go, man, you know, what I thought was maybe overkill eventually wound up making that painting look even better and and you know and I'm not one of these people who um, obviously as you can see this takes the shortcut route when it comes to artwork I, I try to get in as much detail as much um, as much uh, different things for the for the eye to look at as possible I want there to be a lot for the viewer I want them to see you know, the, the cat in its entirety, I want this cat to look very realistic. I want it to look like a photo. I want people to be wowed and awed by it. Um, and and it's But it's not for the viewer, per se. I do it for myself. I personally am not satisfied till it looks lo like what I want it to look like. And uh, that entails making sure that I am um, following, you know, uh, true to the vision that I'm working with or the photo that I'm working with and you know you have to self edit one of the biggest problems you find with artists is that most especially photorealistic artists and realistic artists and hyper realistic artists we're all anal retentive about detail we all want to make it look as much like a photograph as possible and the biggest problem that we have as artists is that we're never satisfied. It's a good thing because you're always trying to improve, but it's also a bad thing because what happens is you get yourself to a point in your project where you suddenly say, you know, I want to just keep on going on. And there comes a point where you can ruin stuff. I remember having done it myself with some with some paintings when I was younger and I was, I was going to high school in Berlin at the time and uh, there were... Uh, there were some art projects I was working on, and uh, they were done in acrylic paint. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, if it's good like this, it would be better if I just did a little bit more here and a little bit more there. At one point, I had a really great painting, and what happened was I overpainted it. It's the old adage about, you know, too many chefs in the kitchen spoils the soup. 
too much detail or too many too many additions to the artwork spoils the art. It's the same way. So I'm coming in now lightly. It's you no, know, it sounds like it's clicking because it's wood, but it, this is actually very light and very fast. Uh, and I am laying in the shadow line to extend these extend the creases. The line has this these wrinkles that are coming up where he's compressed in a little bit because he's bent, he's turning around and he's he's heading in towards the towards the viewer. And I'm just basically extending the creases. I'm not doing it very heavy, I'm kind of going in fast. And the reason I go fast is because in the wood burning, um, the faster you go, the lighter it is. You know, if you go if you go slower, it's heavier. If you go lighter and quicker, it's faster. And so that's the way that you get your different tones. So I'm coming in here over the fur. We're darkening up this area just a smidge. Not too much. You don't want to overdo it. Graham Alexander, that was the name of the artist, by the way. Father name just came to me. But anyway, this is this is basically how you do it. So that's that's uh, you know using that technique to to shade or to um, or to create a uh, a shadow line, and that's essentially it.